sameness, the root of kindness. June 6, 2014 Were you dear ones aware that whenever you displayed any act of kindness that you were naturally expressing the greatest part of you, you were expressing the purity of your love. When you are being genuinely kind towards another person, you are demonstrating during that precise moment that there are absolutely no distinctions existing between you and the other person. Remember practicing kindness leads you towards more loving experiences, it helps unite people, and helps to bring an end to the concept that you are separate, when in fact every person, every creature, every living thing is interwoven. It is nice to be around someone who is habitually kind. You appreciate their presence. You can trust them, respect and value them, and seemingly find yourself drifting around them. Your innate need to gravitate towards someone who is known for their kindness is due to the fact that you can sense their pureness. You know of their selfless nature and other fine and kind qualities can cause you to think of your own qualities and ways. Sometimes being with someone who is of a pure and kind nature, just looking into their eyes or observing their mannerisms, could easily have you wishing your own ways were like theirs. You may even question yourself if it is even possible to develop purer and kinder ways. Try to remember where kind acts come from. They emanate from having a wholesome and pure attitude. When you learn to just be, the wall that separated you from everyone else becomes thin, and before you know it there is no need for walls. The more you are without the walls, the more you are yourself. Practicing meditation and being present helps to lead you towards greater acts of kindness. Being in prayer also guides one towards being more kind. Remember dear ones, to God, each of you are the same, and in that sameness is the root of your kindness. Before you practice acts of kindness, it is important dear ones that you first become observant of how you currently treat other people, become more aware of your inward thoughts judgments and of your outward speech and of your actions determine if your thoughts and actions are pure and kind learn to recognize when interacting with others of your thoughts and emotions during those times as you practice watching yourself you are able to objectively observe how others may be seeing you and how what you do truly affects them it is then you notice if you are less kind and become more aware of the justifications and excuses you create in your mind before and after the interaction. Eventually there will be opportunities presented for you to practice treating others how you would like to be treated, for you to act in their better interest, without betraying your own values and self. You then find yourself moving beyond just caring for yourself, you become genuinely caring towards others. And for your kindness to thrive dear ones, don't forget to reciprocate some of that kindness back towards yourself, the giver also needs to be the receiver of his or her own generosity and pure of heart. Have you ever considered inner kindness before? Well dear ones, inner kindness is an important part of practicing kindness. How you treat others inwardly through your thoughts and emotions holds important revelations and provides great learning material. It is up to you dear ones to recognize how inwardly unkind you think of others. When you know you have unkind thoughts towards others, perhaps you judge them, criticize them, and make fun of them, regardless, the energy you give off is not a kind and loving energy. Take some time to look deep within yourself, into the source of that unkind thought. And from your self-observations you will come to know the true reason why you think unkindly towards a particular person. Perhaps they make you feel jealous or envious, if so it is important to unravel this mystery and relieve yourself from their negative grips. Maybe the other person is someone that shares different opinions than you, which is more than possible. If that is the case try to find some common ground and work from there. Display gratitude for what they have shared even if you don't agree or fully understand. Ask for further clarification if it would help you understand their concept of their way of being. There are so many dear souls competing against each other, striving to be better in things that don't require competition, such as spiritual development and growth. You can let go of your emotional attachment to opinions and not demand that others follow your example. You can become aware and admit that jealousy and envy doesn't provide a clear path for more love to enter. It contaminates your heart and prevents you from shining from your true and authentic self. 
cooperation and competition are the cohorts of natural way to evolution. Competition at its basic level is healthy as it has you always pushing forward, where you try to do your best, but when the self-centered side of you attaches to being the winner, then you become greedy and unkind, you may even depersonalize the others that are aiming for the same thing, which puts them out of your heart. Then the competition can take an unkind turn. We have witnessed vengeful unkindness, and the person being unkind feels justified at the moment, but at that same moment dear ones, they have allowed poison from the negativity of their actions to enter their heart. When you are free inwardly, you are able to move towards love, then you must admit that you need to let go of any of your unkind ways and accept a more loving and caring way of living and being. The most basic and fundamental motivation behind kindness is the acknowledgement of your sameness. It is well known dear ones that from being immersed with your own thoughts, emotions, in your behavior and intentions, can cloud up and obscure your perception of others. When you are able to look beyond all that, you are then able to clearly see the other person and put aside your differences, you are then at that moment left with your sameness. If you look at the surface, the external appearance, you see all the differences from body to personality, to spiritual preferences and beliefs. The differences can be endless. But dear ones if you take the time to look beneath those differences, you will also conclude that each person is filled with purity and awareness, a consciousness of love and kindness that is shared. When you are able to look at another person and see beyond your own external differences, you will be able to see that their own awareness is just like your own, not just a little similar or slightly similar, but from the same shared consciousness. Comprehend dear ones that even your differences of perspective that are on the surface of the basic consciousness, you share. When you look up at the sky, regardless where you are looking from, it is still the sky. If you take the time to move deeper, beyond normal consciousness, differences will re-emerge. You will discover that each of you has your own unique eye that will be different from others. In order to transcend that difference, it is essential to realize and to see that your own uniqueness is derived from the sacred source of that eye, which is the root of every person, every brother and sister, and that source dear ones is God. As children of God, as divine particles of the divine, the degree to which you remember and of your connection with God is also the degree to what you honor respect and treat with the purity of your kindness of all your brothers and sisters that are also unique. The result of seeing in such a way dear ones is for you to be able to recognize your own sameness with others, instead of only seeing your differences. Remember there are people like you, being able to see their personhood, you also see your own. That person is also aware as you are, and you both share the basic, fundamental awareness. The other person also has hopes and dreams, they also carry worries and concerns just as you do. When you are able to see this dear ones, then your kindness flows naturally. When you come from a place of sameness, kindness then can become a wonderful and positive habit when interacting with others. When you recognize an unkind impulse rising within you, you are able to see it and let it pass without affecting others. When you recognize an opportunity to be kind, to be helpful, or to be courteous, you find yourself moving within this opportunity, seizing it and sharing a precious part of yourself with another. Fundamentally speaking, each of you are pure already, you have only allowed distractions to cloud your judgment and perception. When you are able to live within your own inner stillness, you are then able to let go of the bonds of your self-centeredness, your little ego self shrinks. When you are in the center of the conscious stillness of your mind and heart that is working together as one, you are then able to see that consciousness has absolutely no boundaries, there are no center point and no divisions. At this place, self-centeredness does not exist. You do not disappear here. Remember dear ones, in consciousness your own individuality, your I, and your will, does have its place. When you free yourself of the illusory divisions, you are able to move away from your egoic ways and become more deeply connected with the sacred nature of yourself and be able to see the sacredness in others. Being no longer obscured by self-centeredness, you are able to see the conscious part of who you are, 
of the I am that is within all people and within all living creatures and things. Any inclusive feelings you have held, the feeling of separateness is what prevented you from uniting with others. When you no longer feel separated, you are coming from your true and natural self, from a place of purity. This is not something you need to create dear ones, it is already there. As soon as you are ready, simply let go of your singular focus and allow yourself to become one in consciousness, in peace and with love for all people. Remember you are not outsiders of that place of purity. It is a sacred part of you, a part of you that has been covered up. Yet it is also the deepest and truest form of yourself. It is where yourself feels at home. You never need to go outside of your eye or beyond it. Instead all you need to do is return to the root of your eye, to the source that is shared within all people, with all life, to God. When pursuing the return to the root source, know that it is a worthy journey. It is one that will bring out the best in you, and will require your full engagement. As you enter the threshold of your own purity, you will conclude that humbleness and compassion will begin to flow naturally, without any effort. Remember dear ones that wisdom flows from purity. When you have no distractions from your little, ego self, you live united with others and with all life. Your own choices and actions hold true to the authentic needs and of the highest potentials of that very moment. Kindness is in you to give, so give dear ones from the purity of your heart. And so it is. I am Ascended Master, Sarah Bispay through Julie Miller. SpiritualNetworks.com